My name is Tyler. I'm a software engineer at a little company you might have heard of called Docker. Uh, I work on UI for our enterprise applications using tools like React and GraphQL. I'm very humbled to be here today in Berlin, um, very far from my home in San Francisco, to share with you my excitement for GraphQL and a little bit, how about, a little bit about how we at Docker are using GraphQL and how I envision us using it in the near future. As a front-end developer, I find it very easy to be excited about GraphQL because I see firsthand how it makes our lives easier as developers. I write React web applications at work, and few tools have had as significant an impact on my workflow as GraphQL has. At Docker, I would love to implement an optimal GraphQL stack straight away, but there are many hurdles before we can get there. For one, I'm working on a brownfield application. Second, I'm working on an enterprise application, which means we distribute our software as a Docker image to our customers, and they run it in their own infrastructure with their own ops teams. The path to GraphQL for us had to be different than most. Adding new server infrastructure comes at a high cost. To get started with GraphQL, we had to think outside the box. And by the box, I mean the server. We got started with GraphQL without ever writing or deploying a GraphQL server. We added GraphQL to our stack through a simple package addition on the front end. It sounds a little dubious, right? I assure you it's rather tame. The GraphQL JS docs even mention running GraphQL in the browser. GraphQL JS is a general purpose library that can be used in both a node server and in the browser. Hmm. I envision our path to a full GraphQL stack to be something like this. Just three easy steps right, and then we have a magical, perfect GraphQL stack. Well, uh, maybe not so easy. Let's take a look at how we make this client-side client -side only approach work. In a traditional GraphQL implementation, we run a GraphQL on a remote server. The client application take, makes queries over the network to our server, which processes the request and returns the data over the network. We all should be familiar with this model, I believe. In our implementation, we instead run GraphQL in the client application running on the end user's device. Instead of queries being serialized and sent over the network, they are passed as JavaScript values directly to an executable schema, which resolves our data via our REST API. Implementing this with Apollo is actually rather simple. Here's what setting up Apollo client for traditional GraphQL server looks like. They've made it fantastically easy. In this example, we're using an HTTP link, and we are hooking up to a remote GraphQL server. For our client side only approach, we switch out the HTTP link for a schema link, pass in the schema, and that's it. The rest of our application should remain unchanged. Most of our app is unaware that the GraphQL is running in the browser. We shipped Docker EE 2.0 using this pattern, and so far we haven't seen any problems. In fact, our front end is now more performant as GraphQL and Apollo provide easily mechanisms for applying caching across the whole application, something which is non-trivial in things like Redux. We've gained many of the benefits of using GraphQL without much of the overhead a more traditional architecture would require. For me, the next logical step is to take things to the server where we can reap even more benefits and simplify our client application. However, after a stellar implementation on the client, the question has come up, do we even need a GraphQL server? In terms of, oh, sorry. My immediate reaction is to, yes, of course we do. But it's not such a simple question. Adding a new server piece to our architecture requires a lot more testing, QA, and sign-off from many stakeholders in the company. Client-side only approach might be fine for a lot of applications, but I digress. For most applications, a proper server is more optimal for our needs and should be the path forward for Docker. There are a lot of options for writing GraphQL servers these days, with most major languages having at least one implementation. I've played around with a good number of them, and two really stand out to me. The JavaScript implementation, GraphQL.js, and the OCaml implementation, OCaml GraphQL server. Let's look at these options both a little. In terms of ease and speed of getting a server up and running, I don't think you can beat JavaScript. 
Tools like GraphQL tools, Apollo server, and GraphQL Yoga lower the bar of entry to making a GraphQL server and make it super easy to build a, a new architecture. The ecosystem, for JS, JS and, uh, the ecosystem for JS GraphQL is really fleshed out compared to other languages. We also already have a JavaScript schema on the client. Theoretically, we should be able to take this schema, move it to the server, apply it to a, an express endpoint or similar, and everything should work. We swap the schema link back out with the HTTP link, the application keeps running. The OCaml library, on the other hand, would require starting back at square one, or even farther back in, in my mind. On top of writing a new schema and server, we'd be learning OCaml and probably Reason, too. This is a significant barrier, but I don't think it should dissuade us outright. Building a GraphQL server with OCaml GraphQL a server has some really nice properties. Statically typed languages pair especially well with GraphQL. Using the, using the OCaml library, we can get type safety from our schema all the way through our resolvers. If our schema says that a field needs to return a user list, our resolvers need to return a user list or we get a compile time error. This safety leads to a very tight feedback loop. After the initialization of this server, I find that I very rarely actually have to actually go into graphical or write tests for my GraphQL. Instead, I just know at compile time that my GraphQL server works, and when I deploy it, it works. We're still deciding on how to best move forward, but my personal pick is OCaml GraphQL server with reason. We'll see how that goes. A lot of my teammates are still pushing for JavaScript for the ease of use. The next step in our architecture involves this thing I've been referring to as a GraphQL engine. Quick show of hands. Who knows what I'm talking about when I say GraphQL engine? Anybody? There's a few people. So this language isn't very formalized. I really pulled this from the Prisma docs, which describes parts of Prisma as a GraphQL query engine. We'll get to the definition here in a minute of what a GraphQL engine is, or what I at least think it is. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about the dark side of GraphQL, the n plus 1 problem. So there's been an abundance of Star Wars jokes at this conference, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank the uh, Relay docs for that. If you've been building GraphQL servers, writing resolver functions, I've got some bad news for you. You've probably been doing it wrong, or well, not right or optimal. A GraphQL server built with resolver functions likely makes many round trips to the database for a sufficiently deep query, even when using things like data loader. Consider a query we make a request for a user and their friends list. We write a resolver for the query user field and a resolver for the user friends field. Simple. When we execute a query that matches these fields, the query user resolver will always resolve before the user friends resolver does. This will result in two round trips to the database. As the depth increases, so do the number of round trips to the database, n plus 1. Instead of having each resolver make its own request, we should be able to just make a single one using features like SQL joins to get all the data at once. How do we solve this and build truly performant GraphQL servers? The answer is not so simple. You might have noticed this argument that gets passed to the resolver functions at the very end, info. This argument contains an AST representation of the query and contains all the info we could possibly need to resolve our data, just not in a very easy to use format. So instead of writing resolvers, we just need to write a single function that takes info, does something magical to it, and then returns all the data for that query. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, not so easy. This is the danger of GraphQL. If we care to be performant, we are always just a single step away from having to deal with AST. But there is a better way. Enter GraphQL engine. A GraphQL engine is a server application that transforms GraphQL queries into performant data layer queries uh, it does this using a transform similar to this. The engine takes a GraphQL query, transforms it into the GraphQL AST, transforms that AST into a data layer AST, like a SQL AST, renders the query, and then resolves the data and returns it. GraphQL engines open up a whole new architecture and push GraphQL much further into the stack than a simple server. We can effectively use GraphQL engines to wrap our data sources and bring them into the GraphQL domain. A little aside, you might have noticed that we're using RethinkDB, and there's a nice little tombstone up here. For those of you that don't know, RethinkDB, the company, uh, went under a few years back, and 
the project itself has suffered, and we, the devs that use the project, have suffered as well. My manager has phrased it like, "Rethink DB is dead, and nobody knows what to do with its body." Well, from my position, I think a GraphQL engine looks like a pretty good shovel to bury it. If we can get to this level of abstraction and all the queries go through the GraphQL engine, I'm pretty sure we can swap out rethink DB with something that's not rotting, like Postgres. Using techniques like GraphQL bindings, we can combine a system like I just showed into a robust data gateway for our applications. If you haven't seen GraphQL bindings before, definitely take a look at it. Earlier, we heard from Nick about. Uh, the need for a fat gateway layer to, uh, to encapsulate our cross-cutting business logic. I think GraphQL bindings are going to play a major role in uh, achieving that. If you're interested in expanding your own architecture with GraphQL engines, you're in luck. There are several open source and commercial options already on the market, most notably Prisma, Hasura, and PostGraphile. One thing to note is that Apollo has a similarly named product, Apollo Engine, which I don't think falls into this category. Might be wrong on that, but you guys can tell me on Twitter. There are several other options I haven't enumerated here that are smaller open source projects, but they're out there.、Uh, if you have a larger list of this, I would love to incorporate a complete list in the slides before I post them. So let me know. GraphQL has been out for a while, and some people I talk to already feel like it's old news. But that's not the case. It really is an open area of study, and we're still finding out how best to use it in our applications. Docker has taken an unorthodox approach from the beginning, and I don't see that changing. From the client to the server and beyond, I've seen an expanding role for GraphQL in our applications, and I don't see that stopping. I hope my words inspire you to introduce GraphQL into your own applications. Maybe you've been using unorthodox te techniques like we have, and to question its role in their architectures. I love to hear how your team is using GraphQL, especially if you're using an、uh, interesting strategy like we are.、Um, you can reach me here in the hallways of the conference or on React to Flux if you guys are familiar with that. I'm always there in the GraphQL channel, giving probably bad advice, but thank y'all.